Hi everyone, I want to talk to you about the principles of guided intuitive eating for fat loss today. Now you may have heard about intuitive eating. Basically, that means to listen to your body. If your body is hungry, eat. If your body is craving a certain food, eat that food. Now that can be very helpful, especially if you had gone through these restrictive diets, these restrictive programs where you have to count calories, where you have to enter your macros into all sorts of apps, or you maybe even had to weigh your food. That can be a very miserable lifestyle if you're not a competitive athlete. Now, competitive athletes may have to do that because they're competing for, for performance. But for most of us who are regular people, we are not competitive athletes. We don't have to necessarily count our calories or weigh our food or enter our macros. So intuitive eating can be very freeing from that and very helpful if you had had uh, dis an eating disorder in the past. Now, what guided intuitive eating for fat loss is, is giving you guardrails for that. Because if you just purely do intuitive eating, you're just going to be listening to your body, listening to what you want to eat, what, whatever emotion is f fueling or triggering you to grab that particular food that may derail you off your course. Full intuitive eating can be dangerous. It can derail you from your fat loss goals. That's why I want to introduce guided intuitive eating for fat loss because that gives you some guardrails to stay on the path and reach your goals eventually if you consistently apply these principles. So what are the principles of guided intuitive eating for fat loss? There are two main categories. The first category are the mental principles, what we think our mindset really matters and really affects our success. Second set are the physical principles. Now the first set, mental principles, number one, check your relationship with food. Number two, slow down, taste and see what you're eating and eat with thankfulness, eat with gratefulness, don't eat with stress. And that brings us to eat with emotional intelligence. Know what you're feeling as you're eating these foods. Now in this video, I won't go into emotional intelligence in the context of food, but really quickly, it just means to be aware and being able to identify those emotions that we are having as we are eating a certain type of food, as we are craving a certain type of food. Next, put eating into perspective. Put your health in perspective. The purpose of your life is not to lose weight. The purpose of your life is not to be as healthy as possible. There's so much more to life, so don't be obsessed about food. Lastly, respect your body and fuel it well. Know that your body is a vessel. It is an instrument to be used to serve others. So with these mental principles in mind, you will be making better decisions about what you're eating, how you're eating, how often you're eating. Next, the physical principles. Number one, it's really important to know what full feels like. It's really important to know what hunger feels like. And I will show you in the next slide some questions for you to ask yourself as you're eating so you know whether you're really full or you're so hungry. And lastly, exercise without equating that particular activity to calories. For example, stop saying, I am going to burn off this slice of pizza later in the day by jogging around the track. Now that kind of mentality or attitude affects your relationship with food. It'll affect your relationship with pizza instead of enjoying the pizza for the nutrition and the calories and just the pleasure of the taste of the pizza. You're equating that with an activity, which is exercise. Exercise should be done for the benefits of that exercise, not tied to equating that to burning off a certain particular food that you had during the day that you may have felt guilty about. See so how that all connects. So the mental connects to the physical, the physical connects to the mental. Now that you know these principles of guided intuitive eating, you'll be more aware about your eating habits and your behavior and your choices for the food that you eat. Now here are five questions to ask yourself whether you're really full. As you're eating your food and maybe you really don't actually feel like finishing the food, you're not, you're not feeling hungry, but you're not really feeling full, ask this, how is the food tasting right now? 
if you feel you're experiencing diminishing returns it tasted really great like five minutes ago and now i'm not really enjoying it i actually feel like it's a chore for me to finish this then i would say you're full all right so that would be the answer to that i'm not really tasting the food then the the verdict would be you're full stop eating number two am i stressed about something else and feeling distracted from tasting and seeing my food right now where am i on the stress response spectrum so this deals with when we're stressed and we're eating maybe at our office desk and we're thinking about the report that we just gave and we're feeling a little stressed whether we did well or didn't do well and you're just eating eating not really being conscious about how much you're eating how fast you're eating how the food's tasting you're actually going to be higher on the stress response spectrum now you can learn more about that spectrum in my course nourish away your fat um, basically, at any point in time, we are somewhere along the spectrum. On one side is flight or flight, on the other side is rest and digest. And when we're stressed, we're not able to rest and digest. So we need to know as we're eating, we're not so stressed that we're not enjoying our food and we're not, allow we're not allowing our bodies to fully rest and digest our food. And that results in bloating. So if you feel stressed, you feel distracted, you're not recognizing the food you're eating then i would say stop eating maybe choose to eat at a later time when you're not feeling so stressed number three if i were to stop eating right now would i be missing out on something so i'm so stressed i'm not really enjoying my food if i stop i'm not really going to be missing the experience of the tastiness of this food so let's stop i will eat later when i can fully enjoy this food number four do i feel the urge to finish this am i still enjoying this if I'm not enjoying this, the answer is no, then okay, just put it aside, keep it for later, and stop eating. But if you are still enjoying this, you're still tasting it, and it actually makes you feel pleasure, you feel good about eating this, then keep eating. Then you're probably not full. Number five, can I save this for tomorrow as leftovers? You're really not feeling like you're enjoying this food. Can you save it for leftovers? Yes, let's save this for leftovers and then you don't have to feel guilty about finishing that food. So I hope that these principles of guided intuitive eating will really help you make better decisions, eat better. It's not just what we eat, right? It's about how we're eating as well. That really matters. And these habits built over time will help you allow your body to be in that position to draw out that excess fat and use it as fuel and energy to do the things that you were meant to do.